Hey guys, Sean Dove here. The other day I saw Andrew Kramer created this really nice glitch effect inside After Effects and I thought we just have to give it a go using Cinema 4D. We're going to have a play using the Vernoy Fracture as well as some random effectors to create this fun glitchy text transition. Before we do start though, I want to thank you guys. The other week we passed 10,000 subscribers and I was blown away. Thank you all so much for the support. Seeing you guys actually get involved and complete the tutorials has, it's been really cool. I want to start giving a shout out to you guys getting involved. And today that is the render apprentice for this great little animation. I'll pop a link down below for the original tutorial. Cheers, mate. Also, a special thanks to Logic Keyboard for sending me one of their C4D shortcut keyboards to test for you guys. Thanks, Logic. As you guys might know, I'm a massive advocate for using shortcuts. Every chance you get to shave a few seconds off your workflow, that's a win. If you are a beginner to Cinema 4D, I do recommend you check them out. I know I would have loved something like this when I was getting into it. With that said, let's put it to the test. <laughs> Hey guys, so like I said, we're gonna have a look at creating this fun glitchy text transition inside Cinema 4D. Now this was inspired by Andrew Kramer's After Effects tutorial and it got me really excited to try and recreate this inside Cinema 4D. Is this gonna be quicker? Is it gonna be better? Probably not, but it's still a bit of fun to play around and try and pull off this look. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop a Mo Text object into our scene. Let's align it to the middle and I'm just gonna choose a different font, something that's nice and chunky for us. Giorgio Sands should work nicely. Now let's change our text. I'm going to say defect. And the good thing with this is we're not going to need a heap of depth in our MoGraph because we're going for that really flat look. So one centimeter should be plenty for us. All right, let's spin around this and frame it up into the middle. Now to do this, we're going to need to create all these fractures inside this text. So the way we're going to do that is by using our Renoi fracture. So let's come up to our MoGraph tab and with our Mo text selected, I'm going to hold down Alt and select the Vernoy Fracture. And this is instantly gonna start creating all these fractures into our text for us. Now, although this is a start, this isn't how we want our text to be fractured. So I'm gonna come over to Source within the Vernoy Fracture and just delete that source. Now, the way we're gonna create our fractures is by using a spline. So let's come up to our pen tool and I'm gonna draw a spline directly through our text. Nice, and, what we're gonna, and we're gonna use this spline to drive the fractures. So let's take that spline and drop it into the source of our Renoi fracture. And instantly, you're gonna see these fractures running diagonally through our letters, and this is a great start. Let's select the spline in our source field here, and we have different ways of distributing these fractures within our letters. So one that I think is gonna work nicely for us is count. We get, this, we get these nice random sizes happening within our fractures, and they're not so uniform. So great, so we've got our text set up, we've got the fractures happening, so now what we're gonna do is look at how we're gonna animate these. So with our Renoi fracture selected, let's come up to MoGraph, MoGraph effectors, and we're gonna select a random effector. And you can see by having that Renoi fracture selected at the beginning, that random effector is instantly applied. So I'm gonna come over to my random effector and just zero it out on Y and Z. So now these fractures are only getting pushed randomly along X. So I think around 30 is where we're gonna leave it for now. So something we could do to instantly get some animation happening within these fractures is to change our random mode from random to noise. And what this is gonna do is instantly allow us to add some animation to these fractures. So what we'll need to do is scale this down quite a bit so we can still get that, so we can still get plenty of randomness happening. And now when I hit play, we're getting, we're getting a heap of random position happening with all these fractures. We might even need to scale up our position movement a little bit, thinking about 80 is looking good for us now. Now, although this is looking kind of cool, it doesn't feel like glitches. We just want it to happen in little sections at a time. So I want it to be able to have a bit more control of exactly where it's gonna be taking place. So let's change our random mode back to random. And what we're actually gonna do is come over to our fall off and we're gonna choose source. See, now you can see when I hit play, we get no, we get no randomness. We're gonna be driving this randomness with a source. So let's drop a cloner into our scene and we're gonna be cloning some spheres. So let's drop that into our cloner. We can scale these down. Let's go maybe about five centimeters should be nice for us, we're just so we can have a visual representation of where they are in the scene. Let's grab our cloner and we're gonna change this to grid array. So first off, let's change this to only one on the Z axis and we're gonna increase it on X and Y. 
Now our aim here is to cover our entire text with these clones. So let's grab our cloner, pull it up a little bit. And I think what we're gonna need to do is increase our size a little bit. So let's pull it down on Y and we're gonna increase it along X. Nice, and eight clones on X and six on Y should be plenty for us for now. So let's go back to our random effector and what we're gonna be doing, and what we're gonna be doing is using this cloner as its source. We'll select our cloner and drag it into the source link. And what you're gonna notice is instantly we're getting all those fractures randomly displaced again. Now great, we've now set up the source of what's gonna be driving that initial randomness. So with our cloner selected, let's grab another random effector. And this time I am gonna change its mode type to noise. Let's go to our parameters tab. I'm gonna zero it out on Z for a bit and increase it a little bit on X and Y. And instantly you're gonna to start to see what's happening. Wherever those clones pass through our fractures drives that randomness and we get this nice glitched look. And now you can see when I increase that random effector along Z, these clones are getting pushed further apart in space. So not as many are passing through the text. So we now get this nice glitch finish. I'm gonna come over to my Renoi fracture and just turn off colorized fractures so you can get a better look at exactly what's going on. Great, I'm really happy with how this is looking. So essentially what we've done, we've used that, we're using that initial random effector almost like it's the limit that our fractures are allowed to go. The cloner position of those spheres is now driving the glitchy effect that we're getting within this text. And I think that's pretty cool. All right, so now what we need to do is set up a little bit of an animation. We're gonna transition from this defect to another word within this glitch effect. So let's come to frame 10. Let's grab our initial random effector. I'm gonna pull our strength all the way down to zero and add a keyframe. By doing this, we're now gonna have no effect happening to our fractures. I'm gonna come forward about five frames and just increase this strength to 100% and add another keyframe. And now when I hit play, you can see we now start with just our defect text and that glitch starts to ramp up between frames 10 and 15. Great, now what we're gonna do is come forward to about frame 35. And what I'm gonna do here is now, now with our second random effector, I'm gonna add a keyframe just on our X position. Now remember this, now remember the X position is pushing the spheres further away from our text. So that's, what's, so that's what's allowing us to limit it to only small pockets. So we'll add a keyframe at frame 35. We'll come forward about 20 frames and I'm just gonna zero this out and add another keyframe. And now what we've done is brought all those clones really tight and close to our defect text. What, what I'll do is even turn on our cloner for a second so you can see exactly what's happening. Let's add a camera into our scene just so we can come back to that position. And now when I spin around this text, you can see exactly what's happening. All those clones are far apart, are far apart in space until we set that keyframe to zero and they come really tight into our text. And this is now gonna give us more random effect because we've now, because of the source is nice and tight on the text. Let's go back to our initial random effector, add a keyframe at frame 70 at 100%, come forward about five frames, and we'll just zero this out and add another keyframe. Now let's have a look what we've got here. We ramp into it, we get a little bit of glitching, and then, it, then we get this really intense pocket before it then fades off back to the text. So what we're gonna do is use that intense glitching to hide the transform between two different words. So we'll come to our mode text, and at frame 65, I'm gonna add a keyframe. And all I'm gonna do is go one frame forward and change this text. Let's just change it to warning. We can then now add another keyframe. We've now been able to transition between the two different words. So let's have a look at this. Great, I think this is looking pretty cool. We've been able to, we've been able to have a heap of control over exactly where the glitches are gonna be taking place by using that source field inside the fall off. And what I love about this, it is so customizable by how many fractures you have on your text to how much you limit the glitches. Great, so at the moment we're using that initial random effector to only push these fractures along the X position. But what we can also do is change the scale a little bit. Let's just scrub forward to a point where we're getting a few fractures happening within our text. So now in this scale, if we scale along X, we're now gonna get some random scaling happening as well while these fractures are pushing apart. So let's change this to something like nine. And what can also be cool is if we decrease the scale 
on Y. I'm going to hit absolute scale. I'm going to change the Y to something like minus 2. Now let's have a look at this. All right, that's far too intense. Let's change the X to something like 3. I'm going to turn off uniform scale. Maybe we need even less of this. There we go. Something like that's looking nice. Just a, a little bit goes a long way to really be able to create some custom looks within that glitch. All right, there we go, guys. Just a little bit of a fun one today. Having a play, creating this nice glitch transition within text just by using a couple of random effectors. All right, thanks, guys. Hope you can take something away from it, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Thanks for watching guys. If you want to be my next video shout out, make sure you like and subscribe and don't forget to share anything you do create with us. I'll see you next time.